Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so, so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, God loves you. Because he loves you, he made a promise to Abraham and he is fulfilling that promise in your life today. Stay connected to him and watch your life be an overflow for every family around you. Praise God. We've been talking about the blessings of Abraham. And today I trust that the Spirit of God is going to bless us with his wisdom and knowledge. But before we go into today's message, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith. Hey, when we make this declaration, release your faith in it. What does it mean release your faith? Believe that what you're saying will happen. That's what it means to release your faith. Don't tell me, I release my faith. I'm talking, no. It's in your heart you release your faith. Believe that what I'm about to say is surely going to happen. So what are you about to say? Join me right now as we make this demand. Say, Father, I make the demand today for my daily bread. I receive it from you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that every angel responsible for your needs being met be active today and you'll see activities of angels in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right, we've been talking about the blessings of Abraham. Now, yesterday I was sharing some important thoughts with you. Very important. Very, very important. If you didn't listen to yesterday's broadcast, please go back and listen to it and be blessed. Praise God. Now then, I want to read Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Haven't been become a cause for us, for it is written, cost is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, last week I, I touched on some sensitive things concerning um, the teachings of Paul and the, because we're talking about covenants, the covenant God made with Abraham and how it's still in force still today. Many people don't realize that. And sometimes, you see, uh, for example, uh, people who major on teaching, um, the, the, the teaching of grace. Now, there is this, um, error they make when you focus on you see that's why we, we preach the whole counsel of god you don't take a subject and drive it through everything no 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 you need to understand why that subject came into force when it did what was there before it and what's there to achieve you see that now so when people uh, minister or when people specifically major on grace you, you hear people say i'm a grace minister it sounds funky it sounds nice but you see and then they begin to drive because they've appeared to be grace ministers they begin to um, drive a, um, a, a a thought in the gospel that actually most times land them into trouble of doctrine yes praise god you know uh, i think that was last year last year or so you know um one of god's great servants that i respect so much you know came out you know to say oh he doesn't believe um i'm paraphrasing now he doesn't believe titan is, is is important for the new testament uh, believer now in retrospect you know you just think like well you shouldn't have been surprised why i mean because the line of of, of gospel he's been teaching uh, 
there is that temptation to enter there. And you see, now, you see that, now this is what happens most times when we teach the word. You see, if, if you don't understand this, now you, you, I'm, I'm talking to you as someone who sat before the Lord to understand the teaching ministry. Not just someone who's just teaching. No, someone who have sat down and have been taught by the Lord what the teaching ministry is. Now, many people teach, but they don't understand what the teaching ministry is. The same way many people prophesy, but they don't understand the prophetic ministry. It's not the same. Everybody can prophesy. You know, the moment somebody prophesies, they think, oh, he's a prophet now. Come on now. Praise <laughs> God. And, and everybody begins to demand prophecy from him. And because he is not smart enough or she is not smart enough to realize that, look, I'll just stay with the Lord. They begin to push themselves in that ministry. And that's where the trouble comes from. Because see, let me tell you, too, no matter how anointed you are, Satan is always looking around you. If you don't know this, then you've not learned, um, what do I call it now? This is just me. You've not learned uh, maybe ministry two or two. <laughs> I mean, after being born again and receiving a ministry from the Lord, that's the first thing you should have been taught. Uh, hey, Satan is always around you. He's always around. No, I don't want Satan to be around me. You can't change it. <laughs> you can't change it. Satan is always around God too. You've read several accounts in scripture when Satan shows up when God is having a meeting. And they, God didn't send an angel to cast him out. God actually gave him job to do. <laughs> God. Imagine. Imagine you're having a meeting with God. And then Satan comes and now I've, I've heard the, the, the testimony of, of one of the great ministers. Can't remember who that was now, whether it was Kenny Hagin or Lester Sumrall. I really can't uh, tell right now who I, I, I know I've read this story, but I really can't tell exactly who right now. Now he was he was having fellowship with Jesus and Jesus came to visit him, you know. And then I mean, he was just having this wonderful time with Jesus. And Satan came out doing all the naughty things and making some noise. And, and, and he was wondering, I mean, Jesus is here. This guy had the boldness to come here and be making some noise. And so he was looking at Jesus and expecting Jesus to tell him to get out or something. And Jesus didn't say anything. Jesus just continued what he was saying and doing. And until like, aren't you going to do something about the devil? And then Jesus said, no, you do something about it. Said, Me? You are here. It's not... See, that's the truth. Satan, because you've been taught wrong. Anytime you hear demon, oh, you, you want to just come out in that. I, I devil can... Hey, listen. Wherever God is looking at, Satan begins to look there. That's the truth. So you see, when you begin to, you know, just like the same thing, you know, some people, because you hear that somebody saw Jesus in a dream or in a vision, you now start a prayer point, Lord, I want to see you, I want to see you, I want to see you, I want to see you. I tell you the truth, most times, up to 80 or 85% of the time, such people will have a visitation from Satan appearing as the angel of light. Yes. Said, are we not supposed to pray that prayer? You don't push it. So the same thing, because you prophesied somewhere, now everybody starts calling you prophet. No, you have the ministry of a prophet. You have, if God have not told you, you have the ministry or a certain ministry, don't believe what men tell you. Men will only see what they saw and they want to jump into conclusion. So there are many people who have been stuck somewhere or you see them keep changing titles that's why personally I, I, I don't go for titles I'm to whoever what you see what you receive sometimes we just love apostle prophets you know evangelist 
you know, and, and, and all this stuff. Now, understand, I'm not saying it's wrong to bear those names. I'm just saying now, you get to a point in your understanding that you realize that some can know you as an apostle. Others can know you as a pastor. Others can know you as an evangelist. See, all is all about following the Lord and the need for the moment. So when you are called something by someone and you just say, oh, that's the name, then you find yourself start struggling to represent that ministry. Now, that's what I've made people go into errors because they prophesied. Someone called them, you are a prophet. Oh, ah, that's true. Ah, how will you look prophets? James. Hmm. Hmm. And then you now want to appear every time and people are expect because you're a prophet. Everybody's expecting you to prophesy. You don't prophesy by the expectation of people. You prophesy because God has put a word in your mouth. And so make fun out of the whole thing. Say, can I prophesy? <laughs> if you understand the prophetic ministry, you will never try such things. <laughs> you will never try such things. Because when the word of God truly comes to your mouth, you will not be asking, can I prophesy? You will want to run from the prophecy. No, I'm telling you the truth. So when the anointing rests upon you, you won't have time to be saying, can I prophesy? It's the same thing with the teaching ministry. The teaching ministry is not because somebody can study and join scriptures together. It doesn't mean you have the teaching ministry. If that's the case, every intelligent person can be a teacher. But to quote scriptures, to be widely read, doesn't mean you are a teacher. doesn't mean you are called to teach. Of course, the more you know, the more you can give out. But it still doesn't mean you have been given the anointing to teach. The teaching ministry is a ministry that God places on you to bring and explain the divine agenda and purpose of God. It's not the same thing as the prophetic. The prophetic tells it. See, the prophet can tell you the mind of God. But the teacher, by divine inspiration, not by reading. I want you to get it. Not by studying. As a child of God, you must study. But when it comes to ministry, you must realize that as a teacher, you don't teach based on what you have studied. So someone comes to you because you're a teacher and, and I was talking about um, staying those who think they are called to teach grace, right? So someone comes to you because you start pushing an agenda and pushing the agenda. Now someone comes to you and say, hey, um, if this is true, this thing you have been saying is true, it means if we tie it, it means we are operating by what is not grace and begin to think mm, that's true i've never thought about it now instead of you to run back to the lord and say lord what's the place of tithing in this whole teaching then the lord will expand your mind on it you now go ah if i tell people they must still tithe then where is the grace it means we are if god is blessing us because we tithe now, 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 that's wrong. That doesn't line up with the grace message that I preach. Hmm. Then you now look at it and say, hey, is it even true? People are taking advantage of people because of tithing. So truly, they, they are bringing people under bondage because of tithing. I'm telling you how the mind works. Because you took a position that God did not send you to take. And so you want to drive this thing because now, if you now say, no, you must keep tithing, then you are saying this, your grace message is not complete. There is no such thing as grace message in the first place. None. There is no such thing as grace ministers, brothers and sisters. None. I don't know where they find these things from. You are a minister of God and you are sent to preach the whole counsel of God. We teach in everything we do, we do by grace. <laughs> oh yes, even those who were keeping the law, they were keeping the law by grace. 
Those who did not have the grace could not keep the law. Now, because Paul said certain things in Galatians, we hold on to those things. And I told you last week, that's exactly what Peter meant when he said some of Paul's teachings are hard to be understood. And then let me read that scripture to you. First Peter. Sorry, second Peter. Oh, la zebege de brakatan da kishuparia. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse, let me start from verse 14. Now watch this. This is Peter talking, Apostle Peter now. It says, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in him in peace without spot and blemish. Uh, I'm blameless. Now, now he says, he says, you be looking forward to these things. Be diligent to be found in him, in, by him, in peace by the Lord. Be diligent to be found by the Lord in peace without spot and being blameless. He said, that's what you should be looking forward to, right? He says, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. As also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, all as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which on thoughts are on thoughts and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Did you see that? So Peter acknowledged that a lot of people have been twisting Paul's teaching. Now, why could he say that? Because he knew Paul one-on-one. -on -one. He knows what Paul teaches. And what people drive about Paul's message was not what Paul was communicating. You need to get this. So, we find ourselves most times in this place where we are trying to... Um, oh, I, I, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> oh, Apostle Paul said this. Apostle Paul said that. I told you last week. I said, don't use Paul's words. Don't rate Paul's words higher than the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you something. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things and he will guide you into all truth. Even the things Apostle Paul have said, you don't know him. You cannot call him today for explanation. But you have the Holy Spirit who's going to tell you this is truth. This lines with the mind of God. This doesn't line with the mind of God. That's what I showed you last week that even Apostle Paul made mistakes. He made terrible mistakes that cost him a lot. He spent most of his years in prison, not by the will of God, but by his disobedience. You see that now? Now that doesn't mean you discard everything that he's taught. What that tells you is that you should weigh every thought that person has shared and weigh it with the mind of Christ. Because most times when we talk about the grace ministers, you want to measure up with the teachings of Paul. And then you find out that those teachings don't measure up with the teachings of John. I mean, John the beloved. So look at first, second, and third John. Lining up with the grace thing that people are talking about, it looks like ah, John was not a grace minister. Or James was not a grace minister. Because you look at it, you know, those ones are hard. Those ones are, they were all ministers of the gospel. They all love Jesus. John loved Jesus. I mean, Jesus spent time with John, teaching him the things that are going on. The whole book of Revelation, he wrote it. But because of his meeting with Jesus. And John understood Jesus so much because he had the liberty, not just to sit down and listen to Jesus when he walked this earth. He also had the liberty to ask Jesus questions and Jesus will explain. 
You understand what I'm talking about now? He, hai koma no sopra ika bahasha. Our time is up. <laughs> it's I, I have not even gotten. Now I'm trying to clear the ground so that we can really land where God wants us to land. It's important you know these things. Because many people are being led astray by wrong teachings. It's not a very wrong teaching, that is from a wrong teacher. Some sincere, honest people teach wrong things because they were not called to that ministry. Father, I pray for everyone watching and listening right now. Let your word make an impact in their hearts. And let your spirit drive them to the place of truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll continue tomorrow. Bye.